The Celtics blow out the Hornets here at TD Garden, 119-93, to and this is the Garden Report. Josue Pavone here alongside Jimmy up, Toscano. It's been How a while since we did one of these. Been a minute. Jimmy and I, solo. Well, not solo, solo but duo, but I guess. A couple of solo guys. Well, it was a, one heck of a solo a performance of guys by here, Jason Tatum, deal. if yeah. you ask me. 39 what? points, a career high, new career high was set here at TD Garden, and if this game wasn't such a blowout, Jimmy, he probably would have gone for over 40. Oh, he definitely was going to go no over 40 because he had 22 in the fourth. I mean, the guy was heat check after heat check, but he was draining him. I mean, this was the, I know I said after the game, like, he looked like the superstar that we've been told he's capable of becoming, right, in that fourth quarter. It was the way he was scoring. Mm -hmm. He wasn't forcing shots. He was scoring, going to the basket. He was aggressive. He was scoring from the outside. I mean, he was literally scoring from all over the court. Right. And it was clear that the Celtics were feeding him the ball. They knew he, was the, he had the hot hand tonight. And he put them over the top and down the stretch there. He created taco time. If it wasn't for Tatum time, <laughs> That's a good we would have gotten it. taco time. You're right. That's a good way to put it. You know, what I love about Jason lately is the way he's going into his defenders, right? Yeah. He's not just relying on that step back. Right. He's not, you know, settling for that jump shot. He's trying to go inside, but he's also getting into his defenders to free up space and get those open jump shots. Brad Stevens yeah. talked about a handful of uh, mid-range jump shots that didn't necessarily go down, but Brad made sure that everyone knew that he didn't mind seeing Jason take those because of how he was able to get those shots and because of his approach. I, I, I agree completely, and I, I think it goes back to having confidence too, right? We didn't see that confidence with him last year that we're seeing this year. Right. It's almost like... He knows what he's capable of, whereas last year maybe there were some doubts creeping in. And not just on the offensive end, but what Brad actually made a point to say after the game was that he's really come a long way on the defensive end too. Right. And if Jason Tatum wants to become a superstar in this league, he's got to do it on both ends of the court. So I think, and I think Jason Tatum probably thinks that his defense gets a little overshadowed because of mm -hmm. what he's doing on offense. But in order for him to take that full leap and, and become a player that is a perennial all-star and is an all-NBA player, He's going to show up on both ends of the court, and I think we're seeing that now. Absolutely. This segment is brought to you by PolicyGenius.com. Head to PolicyGenius.com. If you're looking for life insurance and don't know where to start, why not start with PolicyGenius.com? Mm -hmm. It is easy. They have a handful of options for you, and it only takes a few minutes, okay? So it's one thing you can cross off your to-do list. That is PolicyGenius.com. Make sure you check it out. Uh, Jimmy, you talk about the defense. You talk about what, what Jason Tatum means to the Celtics defensively. Yep. He talked about being one of those two-way guys. He mentioned Kawhi Leonard as, a, as a, uh, an example of when I, when I asked him if he shared that same sentiment that Brad Stevens shared and saying that not a lot of people talk about how good his defense is. They were more focused on his offense, but we certainly saw some of that today, of course. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like you said, two-way player. The guys like Kawhi, you know, the guys that you are, you know, household names of players that they do it on both. You know, they, they make the highlights on offense, but, you know, they you know they make their money by playing both ends of the court, right? You, right. You, that's how you win championships, too. Yeah. And essentially, the Celtics, what they want to do is go deep into the playoffs and with this current roster, I think maybe if it's not this year, but could be next year, could be the year after, they think that they're a NBA title contending team. The way they're going to do that is by playing, you know, strong offense, but also strong on the defensive end. Is Kevin Walker an all-star? Oh, excuse me, is Jason Tatum an all-star? Yes, definitely. Yeah, he's an all-star. And definitely yes for the first one, right? Kemba, yeah, I mean, dude, have to, have to send half the team to the all-star game <laughs> at this point. No, but I think, I think Jason Tatum is definitely playing at an extremely high level. I mean, certainly if he puts in a few more performances like this before, uh, you know, the voting ends, he's going to earn that, you know, that respect from around the league and from the coaches and, and whatnot. So I think he's definitely uh, taken that leap so far that we've seen this year and, and definitely is a player that not only is deserving of an all-star nod, but would be fun to watch in the all-star game. Right, definitely. You know, year three for Jason Tatum. I do think this one is the all-star season for Jason Tatum, his first all-star season, I think. I think we're in the think, midst of it right now. Think. I think. I'm pretty sure. Well, you think he's going to be a 20-time All-Star. You've told me that. 20 times? So no, told Jimmy. Me that. No, this is, no. This is the Jason I, I said close to 10. I said a perennial All-Star, actually. Perennial. So, like, yeah. 15. Okay. It starts, it starts this year. <laughs> okay. All right. You heard it here first.